the first time you meet someone, if necessary, after building um, rapport and then maybe creating a memory, take a picture with them. And then in the evening or before 24 hours, send the person a text that it was nice meeting you and admire or compliment something specifically that happened there. You are, um, you are full of humor or you have so much emotional intelligence. Admire something specifically. Don't be um, too big and don't be like fake. No, always be sincere and send them that test and say, let's get in touch, you know, and keep that relationship. At least if everyone in your space, if not anything, at least in a year, you should be able to send that person a message, either a Christmas message, um, a festive message, a holiday message, or a birthday message. Hi, lovelies. Welcome to today's video. I hope you are doing extremely well and your kids going on so well. Today, we are on to another video for the 20s, you know. <laughs> and sometimes I believe that, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you are in your 20s or not, you can still enjoy this video and have value. So, in a previous video, I spoke about. Um, relationship in your twenties. If you have not watched that video, you should watch it. It is on this channel. So today we are talking about how we can build a robust career within our twenties. I have a lot to talk about today. I pray God help me to, I mean, talk about some things and then maybe in the, another video I can make a part two or yeah. So hey, let's get right into today's video. <music> I'm on the 20s because I believe the 20s is a beautiful period to build a very great foundation. And that's why um, of late I'm making videos on anything 20s, you know. And for building your career, the first thing you might want to look out for is self-assessment. That is the prime thing to do if you want to build your career, because you cannot build, build a career in a vacuum. You should know where exactly you are going. And I believe that whatever field that you are, you have a branch within that field. I am in the field of food science and technology. It's so broad, like extremely broad. So I have to find myself a branch where I fit. And that is where self-assessment comes into play. And the twenties is where you can do all the risk assessments i mean try everything that you want to try if you want to do business try all the business that can fail and you will learn from it and then you you build up yourself and try another one this is a period you can try in your 30s it is really not for trying it is really not for trying so this is the foundation we have to make and so before you start it all the first thing is assess yourself assess your values what is your interest what are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What are your passions? I'm not saying passion because you can do a lot of things. Let's not box ourselves in just a box. You can do a lot of things. So what are your passions? Count the costs and start to take the risk and try them. And that is where you assess yourself and then you know where you really belong to. You know, you should also factor your future in mind, your future husband, your future children, your future home, how do you want it to be like? Because all of these things comes to play if you want to choose a particular career. So that is the first one. The second one you have to do is skills and education. You cannot remove that out of the equation. It's not necessarily formal education, but education is education because you don't, you don't want to be an educated illiterate because that would mean an uneducated literate is better than you so pursue relevant skills think deep into your major know that what you are pursuing it cannot be replaced or your services cannot be replaced by a robot because how this world is moving now robots will take care of a lot of things so make sure you are quote unquote indispensable in whatever area you find yourself Learn skills, learn complementary skills that comes with your career. It could be negotiation skills, it could be marketing skills, it could be sales, it could be video editing, it could be um, 
graphic designing, all kinds of things, preparing presentations, it could be learning public speaking. If it comes with your skill and you know that it's a complementary skill that comes with your career, sorry. If it comes with your career, you should be able to learn it. And trust me, I'm a PhD student and I'll tell you for free, the classroom knowledge is not enough. You should look outside the classrooms for skills, for knowledge, for things that you need to build your career. So get to those websites where you can get free courses if you don't have money and sit down and learn. You have to stand out of the many people pursuing the same things. So yes, education and skills, you can't undermine that. The third one I'll talk about is networking. Network, network, network. You won't believe it if I told you that I have a whole Word document of about 18 pages of all the people I have met and made memories with. Not like all the people I have met, but those that I have made memories with. I have their names. I have um, some of them. I have their birthdays. I have where we met. I have basic information about them, maybe what they do and all of that. Basic information. I have all of them right from my JHS meet. Networking is so intentional. You cannot be, it cannot be accidental. If you really want to build a robust career, you have to be intentional with networking. I'm currently in Asia, but whatever I want to do in my home country, I get someone to do it for me. Sometimes even in Africa or any country, I can think of someone that I can call and the person can help out. Do not be isolated and always in your room. Go out for events, attend industrial events, attend seminars, attend conferences, attend Zoom meetings, webinars, all of that, and get in touch with people, get talking with people, attend parties, attend birthday celebrations, you know, and don't, ask, don't be so isolated. Talk with people, be genuinely interested in people, ask people what they do, Ask people of their names, ask people of their family, what is the, their position among their siblings, all of those things. Create memories with people, eat with people, if it is necessary, you know, create memories with people and network with them. And after doing that, don't forget them. I always say that the first time you meet someone, if necessary, after building um, rapport and then maybe creating a memory, take a picture with them. And then in the evening, or before 24 hours, send the person a text that it was nice meeting you and admire or compliment something specific and that happened there. You are um, you are full of humor or you have so much emotional intelligence. Admire something specifically. Don't be um, too big and don't be like fake. No, always be sincere and send them that text and say, let's get in touch, you know, and keep that relationship. At least, if everyone in your space, if not anything, at least in a year, you should be able to send that person a message, either a Christmas message, um, a festive message, a holiday message, or a birthday message. At least in a year, one person. You should be able to do that. If you have kept in touch, or no, if you have not kept in touch with someone for like two years, three years, if not done well, my brother, my sister. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you see someone pops up and then wants a help. No, right now it's not about who you know. It's actually about who knows you. Mm -hmm. So the person should know you, have you in memory, have you and the memories you have created. So network should be very, very intentional. And for me, my rule is always credit your social account before you withdraw. Always give value before you take value. Do not expect people to give you value, no matter who, you, who they are. Even if they are the richest people on earth, try to give value because there is something you have that you can give to them. Sometimes it's just your time. Sometimes it's just gratitude. Sometimes it's just your energy. You may not have the money, you may not have the maybe the knowledge, like in your 20s, but you have something. Don't undermine yourself. You have something, you have time. So try to be intentional with network, networking and always and always credit your social accounts before you withdraw. I've made a video on social accounts. If you have not watched it, you can search for it and watch it. Or if you have forgotten, go and refresh your mind. Oh yeah, hurry up. Number four, 
The fourth thing to do to build a robust career is internship opportunities. For me, that is one of the things that made me know that I do not really like working at the industry, especially as um, um, a Q a QA, like quality assurance officer or something, because I got an opportunity to work there, um, I think in my third year undergraduate, and that was during our vacation, then I got a reputable industry, food industry, I mean, that makes um, chocolates, and I love chocolate, so I, I loved working there just for the chocolates, but not really for the position I was working for. So I was always looking at my time thought, break time or closing time. And just that exposure just made me know that I don't belong here. On the contrast, I, I took another internship as a teaching and research assistant, and it was amazing. I never look at my time. I can stay till night. 9 p.m., 10 p.m., to the extent that I was one day robbed when I was going home, you know, but it gave me joy because I love interacting with people, especially students. I love teaching. I love to do things that are related to humans, you know, managing people kind of thing. So, and, and being flexible with my activities, not like every day I'm doing a particular thing, same thing every day. That is not me. So it made me know who I am. It made me know that, oh, I like this, I do not like this. Because what you do like, and so you were exposed to it, you will never know what you are missing. So take this opportunity to explore your possible interests. Go on internships. And when you go there, please serve. Serve people. Don't be like, I'm a university student. Why are you sending me to go and buy porridge? Why are you sending me to go and buy rice? What? I mean, what is it if you go and buy rice? Hmm? What 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 would take what what will, what will it take out of you? It doesn't change your name. It doesn't change anything. Just serve people. Serve people because you never know where that service will lead you to. Okay. So please take internships. Write to companies and take internships. Walk to the offices and tell them that you want to work work for them for free, even if they will not pay you. You want to work for them. Don't worry. Go to make a way, you get a transport, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about the last one. <laughs> I have about 10 of these ways to build a robust career, but today I will share five because of my time, and maybe I'll continue later. But before I share the last one, can you do me a favor? Can you please subscribe for me if you have not done so? Please, please. Okay, thank you for subscribing. The fifth one I want to talk about is get a career model or a career mentor. Someone that is doing the same thing you want to do. If you are in business, someone that is doing the same thing you are doing. If you are in the industry or academia, someone that you can look up to. Get that person and follow the person closely. You know, follow the person closely. Copy and cut. It's never a sin. No, it's not a sin. Even the Bible told us that follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Mm -hmm. So there are patterns that you have to follow. There is nothing new under the sun. So follow them. Follow your lecturer that you so much admire. You admire how the person dresses, how the person does this, how the person follow them closely and learn from them. And our generation is that one that we want to See that people sit down with us or your mentor sit down with you and be talking to you. Please, let me tell you this. They don't have time. No one really have time. So the earlier you get this, the better. Follow them through their sermons, through their podcasts, through their, their YouTube videos, through all the avenues that you get. Because the, the stories or the secrets of champions are in their stories. So if you are listening to them, you can be certain and knowing what secrets they use to climb up the ladder. It's so easy. You don't have to be close to them because, of course, if you become close to them, you have a responsibility and you should be able to face it. So I, I'm sometimes surprised with people who have about 10 mentors. Then it means that you're not being active. You're not being valuable because really, even one mentor, ha. <laughs> I have had my share. It just last week, it was one of the craziest week for me. 
I was just there and I saw it says, Please, can you help me prepare um, this about us? I need it this day. Huh. In less than 48 hours, she needs it. I don't give excuses, so I couldn't give excuses. I had to do it plus mine tightly. I don't know, even know how to describe that week, but I had to do it. That day I slept at 4 a.m. That is mentorship. <laughs> So if you want to be close to people every day, this is my mentor, you are close to the person, then you are not giving value. Having 10 mentors, you cannot save all of them. My sister, my brother, you can't save all of them. So the earlier you get to know this, the better. Get virtual mentors or study people closely from afar. From everything that they say, you will get to know the values and what made them who they are. I think I'll end here. And maybe continue later, or maybe not. But then, if you have not subscribed, please do well to subscribe. This is Personal Women with Grace. What we do here is basically knowledge, skills, learning, virtues that will help us to grow and become valuable people in society. And please remember to like and share on your way out. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.